Hello, my name is Nikhil Jaipurkar and I am going to start this lesson by discussing the chapter number one of uh, the textbook for English which is this textbook Hornbill. The first chapter in this textbook is The Portrait of a Lady by Kushwant Singh. The Portrait of a Lady is a is a picture, you know, uh, a portrait is a picture but it is a portrait with words, it is not a picture that has been drawn as a sketch or as a um, as a picture with, uh, with uh, colors and pencils but it is a picture that has been drawn with words Kushwan Singh uh, was a renowned author and uh, this is a part of uh, the book written by Kushwan Singh uh, in which he is describing his grandmother. My grandmother, like everybody's grandmother, was an old woman. She had been old and wrinkled for the 20 years that I had known her. People said that she had once been young and pretty and had even had a husband. But that was hard to believe. If we stop here for a moment, the author has tried to create a humorous uh, opening statement by talking about his grandmother and saying that as every other grandmother, she was old. Obviously, in order to be a grandmother, one has to first have children and the children have to grow up and those children have to have children of their own and then only a person can become a grandmother so obviously uh, to become a grandmother you end up growing a bit old and the author also says that like every grandmother my grandmother was old too and she was wrinkled wrinkle wrinkle ka matlab hai jhuriya uh, grandmother ka chehra jhuriyon se bhara hua hoga isliye uh, author ne use wrinkled kaha hai wrinkle mein w silent hai the spelling is W R I N K L E D, wrinkled. And the author says that she was as old uh, as she looked for that 20 year period in which he knew her. My grandfather's portrait hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room. So the grandfather's picture or a portrait uh, must have hung above the mantelpiece uh, in, in the drawing room. Uh, he wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes. His long white bed covered the best part of his chest and he looked at least a hundred years old. He did not look like the sort of person who would have a wife or children. He looked as if he could only have lots and lots of grandchildren. Now, whenever uh, children have a picture of their grandparents in their mind, they, especially young children, they feel that uh, our grandparents must have been this old always. It is difficult for them to imagine that the grandparents would have been children at some point of time. They would have been young men and women at some point of time. Uh, they were parents, obviously they are parents of their parents but small children, young children, they are not able to uh, realize this and therefore they feel that our grandparents would always have been old and would always have been grandparents. How could they have been parents or how could they have been children? It is difficult for them to imagine that. As for my grandmother being young and pretty, the thought was almost revolting. It was a thought which revolted, which means it uh, did not gel with his thought process. Uske, uske mindset mein wo particular soch ki meri grandmother sundar ho sakti hai ya meri grandmother young ho sakti hai wo soch us uh, chote bachche ke dimag mein ek tarah se ek bhuchal leke aati hai, ek tarah se ek um, jise hum revolt kehte hai. What is a revolt? A revolt is a... Uh, uh, a protest by uh, some people against the 
uh, order of the day or against the rule of the day or the rule of the state and therefore this thought comes as a revolt it starts fighting it starts fighting with the mindset of the author that seemed quite absurd and undignified it was absurd it was illogical it did not seem to be correct it it seemed as if it was something which was wrong and undignified lacking dignity lacking any sort of uh, morality it was undignified on her part and we treated it like the fables of the prophets she used to tell us we treated this particular story as fables of prophets or or some stories or 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 some kind of a mythology we treated the story that she used to play games as a child uh, we treated it as a myth or as some of the fables which are obviously untrue she had always been short and fat and slightly bent you must have noticed that many a times old people because of uh, their age they are not able to walk straight they bend at their waist and therefore uh, which is also called as stooping so they stoop or they bend at their waist and they they walk in that bent posture her face was criss cross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere her face was full of wrinkles unka chehra jhuriyon se bhara hua tha because she was very old and that's why her face was full of wrinkles they were going from everywhere to everywhere they were criss crossing her face they were going from every direction to every other direction no we were certain she had always been as we had known her we were quite certain all the all the grandchildren were quite certain that she was never young she was never pretty she always has been old and she always has been a grandmother old so terribly old that she could not have grown older and had stayed at the same age for 20 years she could never have been pretty but she was always beautiful she may not have been uh, pretty in the sense of the physical beauty in in the sense of the physical beauty of her face of her body she could not have been pretty but she was always beautiful because she was our grandmother we felt that she had a beauty she loved us and therefore we felt that she was very beautiful she hobbled about the house hobbled hobble hobble ka matlab hai ki langdate hue chalna jo vyakti agar aapke pair mein moch aa jaye ya aap aapko pair mein dard ho rahi ho ya if if somebody is very old then that person is not able to walk straight and that person has to hobble therefore grandmother also hobbled about the house in spotless white she used to wear white clothes she used to wear spotless white and she would hobble around the house with one hand resting on her waist to balance her stoop since she is bent you can imagine a, an old uh, woman uh, who is bent at the waist who is trying to uh, balance her posture by putting her hand on her waist and the other telling the beads of her rosary telling the beads of her rosary rosary is uh, a prayer bead uh, 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 you know something something what we call as rudraksh rudraksh ki mala now what is uh, what is the telling the beads of her rosary which means that she was pushing the beads of her rosary in her hand in one of her hands and she was counting the number of times she uh, said a particular prayer or a particular mantra jo jap karte hain jap karte waqt you tend to count how many times you have Uh, said or you you recited a particular prayer so she used to have a rosary bead uh, beads in her hand and she would continuously keep telling the beads of the ros- rosary and that means that she is praying and she used to pray a lot her silver locks were scattered untidily over her pale puckered face and her lips constantly moved in in audible prayer so so many things have been described in this one sentence it says that she has silver locks silver means uh, white or gray hair she obviously was old therefore she did not have uh, black hair she had hair which was gray or uh, uh, what you call uh, silver 
and locks. Locks means a bunch of hair. So she had locks scattered untidily. So so the locks she she was not very tidy with her hair. Her her silver locks was were scattered untidily over her face, and her face was pale. Her face was colorless. Her face lacked health. Uh, whenever you you see people who have just come up from illness or who are very sick, you will see that their face has lost color. Their face is pale, which means that there is not enough blood in their body to give color to their face, and that is what is meant by pale. Puckered. Puckered means probably having pock marks or having some marks on the face uh, because of old age or because of some kind of uh, uh, you can say a, a disease of the skin, and her lips. Constantly moved in inaudible prayer. Her lips constantly moved, even though no sound came. The prayer was inaudible. It was not audible. Audible का मतलब है जिसको सुना जा सकता है. Inaudible. I N A U D I B L E. Inaudible means something that cannot be heard. It it is something which is silent. Yes, she was beautiful. She was like the winter landscape in the mountains. an expanse of pure white serenity breathing peace and contentment so the author says that she was beautiful in her own way she may not have been pretty she may not have been physically uh, the an example of uh, beauty or prettiness but she was like a winter landscape obviously she was all white she used to wear white clothes she had white hair so she looked like a winter landscape for example you may look at a uh, landscape uh, in the hills in the himalayas which are covered with snow maybe glaciers these are all white just like grandmother who would be in spotless white and she was an expanse expanse means a very large area an expanse of a sea or expanse of water expanse of land which means a very large area of land of pure white serenity pure white serene what is serene serene means something which is uh, very calm very peaceful uh, undisturbed uh, so serene uh, serenity uh, is a uh, uh, noun uh, from the adjective serene therefore uh, she was something which was very uh, which it which was an example of serenity or calmness or peace breathing peace and contentment contentment content hona matlab ki santusht hona you are satisfied with something that is contentment you are happy you are uh, happy with what you have and, and don't desire more that is contentment and she was content she it seemed as if she had everything that she wanted and she did not desire anything more my grandmother and i were good friends my parents left me with her when they went to live in the city and we were constantly together so the author is starting off with his story how uh, his relationship with his grandmother started uh, his parents they they might have got a uh, gotten a job in the city or they must have moved there for something and therefore when they moved initially before they settled things in the city they left him with his grandmother in the village and therefore the author spent a lot of time with his grandmother in the village where he was left in her custody she used to wake me up in the morning and get me ready for school she said her morning prayer in a monotonous sing song while she bathed and dressed me in the hope that i would listen and get to know it by heart but i listened because i loved her voice but never bothered to learn it so daughter is talking about uh, how grandmother would uh, wake him up in the morning try to get him ready for school she would give him a bath she would uh, dress him in his uh, clothes in his uniform or whatever clothes he wore to school and she would sing a prayer song all the time so that the author her grandchild could learn the song by listening to it every day repeatedly again and again but the author says i listen to the song just because of her voice because i loved to hear her voice but i never bothered to learn it then she would fetch my wooden slate which she had already washed and plastered with yellow chalk a tiny earthen ink pot and a red pen tie them all in a bundle and hand it to me 
So she is doing all this. She is getting him ready for school. She is bringing his wooden slate. She is getting him his ink pot. She is getting him his pen, his red pen. Tie them all in a bundle and give it to him so that he is ready for school. After a breakfast of thick, stale chapati. Stale means basi. Stale means something, uh, uh, some food which has been prepared some time ago and it is not fresh. It is, it is the opposite of fresh. So she would give me thick stale chapati, probably something left over from last night's dinner with a little butter and sugar spread on it. We went to school. So we took, uh, we, we, we ate uh, I, I ate a breakfast of uh, stale chapati with butter and sugar and then we went to school. She carried several stale chapatis with her for the village dogs. So she, she has carried some chapatis with her to feed the stray dogs of the village. My grandmother always went to school with me because the school was attached to the temple. The priest taught us the alphabet and the morning prayer. While the children sat in rows on either side of the veranda, singing the alphabet or the prayer in a chorus, my grandmother sat inside reading the scriptures. Now you see, why is the grandmother accompanying uh, her grandchild to school? Obviously, one reason is that she wants to go. Uh, she wants to spend time with her grandmother. She can't send him alone to school. So she accompanies him to school. But the school is also in the same building or, or in the vicinity of a temple. The temple priest is the teacher of the school. Therefore, when this boy is in school, grandmother sits in the temple and reads the scriptures. What are scriptures? S-C-R-I-P-T-U-R-E-S. -E scriptures. Now, scriptures are religious books. For example, the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, the Bible, the Granth Sahib. These are all religious scriptures. There are many other religious scriptures, for example, the Vedas, the Upanishads, and so on and so forth. So this uh, gives her, this gives uh, the grandmother an opportunity to spend time at the temple, an opportunity to read scriptures. So she goes along with this boy to his school. When we had both finished, we would walk back together. This time, the village dogs would meet us at the temple, at the temple door. They followed us to our home, growling and fighting with each other for the chapatis we threw to them. So, the village dogs must be used to getting food from grandmother. They know that this woman would feed us. Therefore, they are waiting for them and they follow them home and fight and growl. Growl karna matlab gurrana. Jaise ki... Uh, there might be many dogs and, and they are fighting for food. They are, sometimes there would be uh, you know, less food uh, than what is enough for so many dogs. Therefore, they would growl and fight and they would try to get a lion's share of the food that was being offered to them. When my parents were comfortably settled in the city, they sent for us. Now, Pay attention. Now, this is where the, the narrative is changing. This is where the situation is changing. It was all hunky-dory till now. It was all uh, fine, going all right for the grandson and the grandmother. But now, the parents are settled in the city and they sent for us, which means they called us to the city. They told us, come, come to the city. We are settled now. You can both come and join us. That was a turning point in our friendship. Now, this is an important juncture of this story because... Uh, at this point of time, uh, before this point of time, they are, they are living in the village, they are living together, they are very good friends, they spend a lot of time together, in fact most of the time during the day, they are spending together, the grandmother and the grandson, and the grandmother is taking active part in 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 the in the events of uh, his uh, in the event events happening in in her grandson's life but now they are going to move to the city and this is a turning point in the narrative in their friendship although we shared the same room my grandmother no longer came to school with me i used to go to an english school in a motor bus there were no dogs in the streets and she took to feeding sparrows in the courtyard of our city house. So, so these are changes that are happening because of change of setting, because of the change of location. 
they have moved to a city. In the city, the school must be far off. The school must not be close to the uh, place where they are living. Therefore, grandmother now cannot accompany her grandson to school. Also, she may not know the way. It may be too dangerous to walk on the streets with the traffic and all. And so, because of these reasons, now the boy is going to school in a motor bus. So, grandmother's walk where she would walk him, walk her grandson to the school, that part is now over. There are no dogs in the city, there are no dogs on the streets. Maybe uh, the municipal corporation is strict about it, they don't allow strays, and therefore the grandmother now has taken to feeding sparrows in the courtyard. She is not feeding dogs, but she is feeding sparrows in the courtyard of their city house. As the years rolled by, we saw less of each other. For some time, she continued to wake me up and get me ready for school. They are sharing the same room. So grandmother, for some time, continued to wake him up and continued to get him ready for school. When I came back, she would ask me what the teacher had taught me. I would tell her English words and little things of Western science and learning. The law of gravity, Archimedes' principle, the world being round, etc. And all these things you can imagine, these must be new for grandmother. She may not be aware of the science. Also, the school being an English medium school, it is it, it must be difficult for grandmother or, it, or almost impossible for her to understand what was being taught. I'm sure the school in the village would be a vernacular school, a school with, in which, uh, which is being taught in the local language. And grandmother surely understood most of the things that were taught in the village school. But now in the city school, things are different. This made her unhappy. She could not help me with my lessons. Now this is important because language is, is, is such an important connection between individuals. If you understand somebody's language, then you feel connected with them. If you don't understand their language, you feel left out. You feel as if that person uh, is speaking something that uh, is, is wrong, that you don't understand. And therefore, for the grandmother now, with the school being in English, uh, the, the syllabus being in English, I think it is very difficult for her to maintain the same connection, to maintain the same kind of friendship with her grandson. She did not believe in things they taught at the English school and was distressed that there was no teaching about God and the scriptures. In the old school, in the village school, since it was being run in a temple and the priest, the pujari himself was the teacher, there would have been a lot of teaching about God, about scriptures. But in the city school, grandmother is unhappy that there is no emphasis on teaching about God. There is no emphasis about uh, scriptures, reading scriptures or, or scriptures being taught. Therefore, grandmother is again unhappy. First of all, she doesn't understand the things because they are in English. Then she comes to know that there is no teaching about God. Finally, one day, I announced that we were being given music lessons. Now, this was probably too much for grandmother to handle music. Mm, she was very disturbed. To her, music had lewd associations, which means that music is not for, for not for people from uh, good houses. Music is not for people uh, who are uh, the gentlefolk. It was the monopoly of harlots and beggars. She thought, who needs music? People who, who are good for nothing. People who want to beg on the streets. They are the ones who want to sing. People who are not of good character. You know, characterless people. Those are the ones who need music. That was her understanding according to her uh, mindset. According to what she was brought up to believe. And not meant for gentlefolk. She said nothing, but her silence meant disapproval. She disapproved of her grandson being taught music. She couldn't say anything because she couldn't change his school. She couldn't change what they taught at school, but she disapproved and her silence meant that. She rarely talked to me after that. So you see how the relationship has changed from the village where she used to accompany him to school. She understood everything what they were teaching her, teaching him. 
she was a part of his life she was a part of his day she cooked for him she bathed him she she got him ready she prepared his uh, bag school bag with all the things that he needed and she felt attached she felt involved but in the city she can't accompany him to school because he goes in a bus she can't understand anything because it is being taught in english medium she doesn't approve of many of the things that they are being taught she is disappointed that they are not being taught about god and she is also uh, very angry or disturbed because they are being taught things like music uh, which according to her is not for gentle folk so so friends uh, do you see how the relationship has changed and because of that the author has described this event of moving from the village to the city as the turning point we will look uh, at this particular uh, chapter in uh, the remaining part of the chapter in part 2 of this video so keep looking out for it thank you